It was a warm evening in a suburban neighborhood, the kind where the fading sun painted the sky in hues of orange and pink. Maya Johnson, a 28-year-old African-American woman, was making her way home after a long shift at the local diner. The chatter of her co-workers and the sizzle of the grill still echoed in her mind. She loved her job, but she was eager to return to her small apartment, where she could unwind and prepare for her upcoming nursing exams. Maya put her headphones in and pressed play on her favorite playlist. As the music enveloped her, she allowed herself to drift away from the worries of the day. Each step felt lighter, and she relished the warm breeze on her skin. Little did she know that this evening stroll would turn into a nightmare that would test her spirit. On the corner of her street, a police car sat with its lights flashing softly, the blue glow cutting through the twilight. Officer Mike Reynolds, a 35-year-old white cop with a reputation for aggressive policing, was on duty. He prided himself on keeping the neighborhood safe, but his methods often drew criticism. He had a history of targeting individuals based on their appearance, particularly young black men and women. As he scanned the area, he spotted Maya walking toward him. Instinctively, his eyes narrowed, and he felt a rush of adrenaline. In his mind, he had already made assumptions about her. She didn't belong in his neighborhood, and he was determined to find out why. Hey, you there, Mike shouted, stepping out of the car. His voice echoed off the nearby buildings, authoritative and commanding. Maya, startled, paused and pulled her headphones out. Is there a problem, officer? She asked, trying to keep her voice steady despite the sudden spike of fear in her chest. Where are you coming from? He demanded, striding toward her with a swagger that suggested dominance. He was all too aware of the power he wielded. Just from work, I'm on my way home, Maya replied, her heart racing as she sensed the hostility in his demeanor. You don't look like someone who works around here, he sneered, his tone dripping with condescension. Maya felt a knot tighten in her stomach. She had encountered this before, people judging her based solely on her appearance. But this was different. This was a police officer, and the consequences could be dire. I assure you I do she said, her voice steady but laced with an underlying fear. Officer Reynolds wasn't satisfied. He began to question her further, demanding identification and making snide remarks about her clothing and demeanor. The more he pressed, the more uncomfortable Maya felt. She sensed the power imbalance, the weight of racial prejudice bearing down on her. Why are you out so late? He continued, his tone accusatory. You should be careful. This neighborhood isn't safe. Maya took a deep breath, trying to remain calm. I know how to take care of myself, officer. I'm just walking home. His eyes narrowed, and he stepped closer, invading her personal space. I think you're lying. You should know better than to be out here alone. It's dangerous. Maya felt tears prick at her eyes. This was a nightmare she hadn't expected. I haven't done anything wrong. Can I please go home? You'll go home when I'm finished, he said, pulling out his radio to call for backup. Just sit tight. As she stood there, humiliated and frightened, a crowd began to gather. People watched, some recording with their phones, others whispering among themselves. Maya felt exposed, her dignity stripped away in public. She longed for the ground to swallow her whole, to escape the stares and judgment. Just then, a fellow officer, Officer Sarah Mitchell, arrived on the scene. She was younger, and her demeanor was markedly different from Mike's. She had a reputation for being empathetic, often seen engaging with community members instead of asserting dominance. Mike, what's going on here? She asked, surveying the situation with concern. This woman was acting suspiciously. I'm checking her out, he replied dismissively, his pride on the line. Sarah looked at Maya, then back at Mike. Is that really necessary? She's just walking home. Maya seized the opportunity. I have the right to walk home without being harassed. I've done nothing wrong. Officer Reynolds's face flushed with anger. You should watch your tone, he warned. But Sarah stepped in. Let's just let her go, Mike. There's no reason to escalate this. As the tension hung in the air, Mike's frustration boiled over. You're too soft on these people, Sarah. 
They need to know their place. Maya's heart sank further as she realized that for Mike, this was about more than just her. It was a reflection of his deeply ingrained biases. With Officer Sarah's insistence, Maya was finally allowed to leave. The humiliation weighed heavy on her as she walked away, shaking with anger and fear. She could hear Officer Reynolds muttering about people like her, and it cut deep. That night, Maya replayed the encounter in her mind, grappling with her emotions. She felt powerless and angry, yet determined to speak out about the injustice she had faced. She knew she couldn't let this go unchallenged. The following day, Maya went to her local community center, where a meeting organized by a civil rights group was taking place. As she listened to others share their experiences, she felt a sense of belonging. She wasn't alone. Others had faced similar situations, and together they could advocate for change. Maya stood up and shared her story, her voice steady and resolute. The room was silent, everyone listening intently as she recounted the harassment she had endured. When she finished, the room erupted in applause. She felt a rush of empowerment, her pain transforming into purpose. Meanwhile, Officer Reynolds sat in his squad car, grappling with the consequences of his actions. His colleagues teased him about the incident, but inside, he felt the weight of guilt. Sarah had made him aware of how far he had crossed the line, and he couldn't shake off the thought that he had nearly ruined an innocent woman's life. Weeks passed, and news of Maya's encounter circulated in the community, sparking protests and discussions about police conduct. As Maya shared her story publicly, Officer Reynolds's name became synonymous with discrimination, and the department began to face scrutiny. One evening, as he watched the news, he saw Maya speaking passionately about her experience, her voice strong and unwavering. She spoke about the need for understanding, compassion, and accountability in law enforcement. As he listened, something shifted in Reynolds. He felt a pang of regret that pierced through his hardened exterior. This was a woman with dreams, a life ahead of her, and he had tried to shatter it based on unfounded prejudice. The realization hit him like a ton of bricks. He had let his biases cloud his judgment and nearly ruin someone's life. Driven by this new awareness, Officer Reynolds made a decision. He contacted the civil rights group that Maya had joined, hoping to apologize and take part in discussions about bias in policing. To his surprise, they welcomed him, eager to engage in difficult conversations. Over the next few months, he attended workshops, listened to the stories of those affected by police discrimination, and learned about the systemic issues that perpetuated racism. Slowly, he began to understand the impact of his actions and the importance of empathy in his role. Eventually, a town hall meeting was organized to address the tensions between the police department and the community. Maya was invited to speak, and Officer Reynolds felt compelled to be present. As he sat in the audience, he felt a mix of anxiety and determination. When it was his turn to speak, he stood up, his voice shaky. I am here to apologize to Maya Johnson. I treated her unjustly and allowed my biases to influence my actions. I am deeply sorry for the pain I caused her and the damage it did to our community. Maya was taken aback. She had never expected to hear an apology from him. Thank you for your words, she replied, her voice steady. But it's not just about me. We need change. We need understanding. As the two exchanged words, a ripple of hope spread through the room. They both recognized that healing required more than just apologies. It required active efforts to change the systems that had allowed such discrimination to persist. From that day forward, Officer Reynolds became an advocate for change within his department. He worked with community leaders to implement new training programs focused on bias awareness, community engagement, and de-escalation tactics. Maya, empowered by her experience, continued to advocate for justice and equality. She participated in forums, sharing her story and urging others to join the fight against discrimination. Together, they forged a partnership that transcended their initial conflict. Their joint efforts began to change the narrative around policing in their community. As the months passed, Maya and Officer Reynolds continued to collaborate. They organized community events focused on building trust between law enforcement and residents. These gatherings became a safe space for dialogue, 
where people shared their experiences and concerns, and officers listened with open hearts and minds. Maya's determination inspired others to speak out. People began to share their own stories of discrimination, and the police department took steps to address these issues. The partnership between Maya and Reynolds transformed from a painful confrontation into a beacon of hope for the community. The community's efforts began to bear fruit. Crime rates dropped as trust grew between residents and the police. More people felt comfortable reaching out to law enforcement, knowing they would be treated with respect and dignity. Officer Reynolds became known for his commitment to change, and he took pride in serving as a bridge between the police and the community. Maya, meanwhile, was accepted into nursing school, fulfilling her dream of helping others. She often reflected on that fateful night when everything had changed. What had begun as a traumatic experience had turned into a catalyst for growth and healing. Years later, during a community celebration, Maya stood on a stage, looking out at a crowd filled with smiling faces. She saw Officer Reynolds among them, a testament to how far they had come. Change doesn't happen overnight. Maya spoke into the microphone, her voice steady and strong. But when we stand together, when we listen to each other, we can create a future where understanding and compassion reign. The crowd erupted in applause, and as Maya looked out at the people she had fought for, she felt a sense of fulfillment. She had turned her pain into purpose, and in doing so, had not only transformed her life but the lives of many others. Officer Reynolds continued to advocate for police reform and was promoted to a leadership position, where he could influence policy changes. He remained committed to the principles of community policing and worked tirelessly to ensure that no one would have to endure what Maya had faced. Maya graduated from nursing school with honors, her experience shaping her into a compassionate caregiver. She often spoke to young people about the importance of resilience and the power of using their voices to drive change. Their story became a symbol of hope, showing that even in the darkest of times, healing and understanding are possible. Maya and Officer Reynolds had proven that change begins with courage, empathy, and the willingness to confront one's own biases. The journey of Maya and Officer Reynolds serves as a reminder that even the most difficult encounters can lead to growth and understanding. Their story is a testament to the power of compassion and the importance of advocating for justice. It highlights how dialogue, empathy, and the courage to change can bridge divides and foster a better future for all.